Saturday 25th of June, Hutt Recreational Ground. Referee Jack Travella, Marison Pace versus Hutt Old Boys. Premier 2 and kick off. I like your width there Jack. And there again. Scanning easily. Just looking at your head, Jack, and you never looked at the Huddle Boys back lines at all at any stage there. Um, you don't have ARs, so you've got a responsibility around offsides, maintaining that space. So make sure that you are in between your calls, having a quick scan, and just ensuring that they're maintaining the gap. So if you just run that phase back again as well, you are very square to the sideline. I think you can be a bit more side on facing the H and still see what you need to see. Um, but if that ball does come out, you are then readily able to see where uh, defending um, opposition players are. Just slow that secondary signal down a bit, Jack. Um, nice and clear secondary signal above your head, that's all good. Just slow it down a bit, it just creates a perception of a referee who is nice and in control of themselves. So sometimes it's just very little things 
that change of perception um, and that's one of the things that you can do to help create that. See how you were, square, you were square there to the to that last phase, and then you had to turn and look and turn your back away from Hot Old Boys Marist. Whereas if you keep facing the H, looking sideways into that that phase, you can scan back lines, and then you could have pirouetted back with the ball rather than a. Uh, the other way around, which you had to look at the Maris and Pats players and then turn left and right round back to the Hut Old Boys again rather than the other way around where you had your eye on the ball all the way through. Hope that made sense. Effectively, you should be pirouetting with the ball after observing defending players. So I'm going to look at your head again here, Jack. Your head is down, your head is down, and once again, you never looked at the Maris and Pats defending back line. So I think you need to take that under consideration, and you could be side on looking into the scrum, being able to observe defenders, but still be able to manage the scrum and see everything you want to see. So effectively you've got no idea what the defending back lines are doing. So a smart first of eight is going to bring his first of his back line up very shortly. Uh, if he's got any smarts about him at all because they're going to know that you're not watching. communication uh, as an explanation of your penalty. Make sure that you're just not talking to one player, that you're talking to 16 plus players uh, so they're all learning from what you're picking up and hopefully uh, preempt some future penalties because they'll go oh, he's on to that, won't do that again.
So once again, you're clearly explaining to a player what's, what it's for. Um, it's, if you play that back, it seemed to take a long time before you to make that decision. Um, could you have called out advantage not rolling earlier to make sure everyone knew what was going on? So there I reckon the Hutt Old Boys back line started to sneak because they know that you're not watching. Yeah. Are you reckon to that? I know. 
So I reckon those Maris backs were all up offside as well. They know that you're not looking. So there's the position when you could have a quick scan. Look at those backs, Maris and Pat's backs up again. So there, good manners of a back line at a line out. Why not the same thing at scrum time?
So that looked like a good reiteration of the penalty and tackles, you need to bring them down. Um, I'd just like you to maybe convey that message to more people. So even though Huddle boys were about 10 metres back to start with, um, I think they still came up before the ball was out. Did he had to release the to re oh that's very dubious. He had to release, he had to release the player or the ball. Or both. So play that one back, Jack, and just have a think about what comes first. So the player does the player have to release the ball when they're tackled? Uh, along with the the tackler having to release. Um, obligations by both. You chose one. Is that necessarily right over the other one? Um, a good one to discuss. So what, what would have been your decision? Sorry? What would have been your decision? Hey. Well, don't sit on the fence. It's not. <laughs> Which what comes first, chicken or beer?
Okay. I won't name you. So, Jack, where's that player going? Where's that player going? Okay, go and have a cup of coffee, mate. You're good. So, where's that player going, Jack? Are you waiting for a cup of coffee is there with his mates, or what's happening? Voluntarily, he uh, might be going to go down behind the post. So you need to slow that process down for yourself, create time and space, yellow card the player, direct him down behind the dead ball area, behind the post, and then restart the game. So time and space for you. a nice slow clear secondary signal looked nice and calm and collected which is the perception that you're wanting to give so more of that Good to see you at least at the back of the line out on an attacking line out that close to the line. My preference would have been if you were slightly maybe on the defending side so that if Hutt had won it at the front and driven for the corner, you'd have been there really quickly and been able to see everything. But at least you're at the back and um, not locked in on the touch line, so that was okay.
So they're hut right up, maybe two metres back from um, the offside line.
flat positioning, I just think you're too flat, Jack, when the ball's under control. Not that the outside guys are offside, but you're only looking at the inside guys only. If you gave yourself a one or two metre back and then as the ball came out you flattened. Second half just kicked off. Just look at your orientation at the end of that line out, Jack. If you've been side on, facing more towards the hut old boy's side and looking sideways down the line out, it makes it so much more easy to look at defenders. So, excuse me, can I just Sure. Oh shit. So you manage Huddle Boys back line then? That was good. Good to see.
So I like your body orientation there, angled towards the defenders. for the camera work. It's a balance between um, keeping the camera out of the, the rain and uh, getting down far enough so the stanchions don't get in the road.
He did, but uh, within the 10 metre circle of where the ball was landing and made no effort to get out at all. But it's one where you could have gone, oh, I can get away with that one. Good management of Marison Pass back line there, that line out, well done. So that's where the situation would have liked you'd have had uh, a metre, two metres more depth on that far side on that last ball. And that just creates and opens up your vision out wider. And then you flatten as the ball emerges if you need to. Hi. So I like your sideways on orientation again, looking at the opposition defenders, which is good. See?
So, um, Jack, a tweak for when you're wanting to move to the next step or in your time on, time off, which is uh, pretty okay. You definitely whistle for time off, but you didn't, you don't appear to do it for time on. Make that a very deliberate process for yourself. Uh, you go to the next level and you might have a timekeeper, well then they want to be able to work from your signals and maybe from your whistle. So they definitely want to know when the time is off and they definitely want to know when the time is on. So it's a little thing, but another one you can work on now that you're becoming more and more comfortable with this, le this level and wanting to move to the next. Have a word to Mona. managing the hard old boys back line uh, and it was just a slight tilt of your head was all you needed to do and yet you still were there managing the scrum so well done you've adapted that really nicely I think So I think that was a very good uh, management thing to do there, Jack. So it looked like it was a no arms dive at the feet. And I think you needed to manage it, so well done in stopping the game and doing that. So Jack, just reviewing that, was that foul play at the line-out? Um, if it was foul play at the line-out, where's your penalty location? Um, I know Maris stood off the line-out, but then he came in and made the tackle while Hutt was still involved in the line-out, so I think it's technically still a line-out, which makes in your penalty at the 15 metre.
Just to, just to look pretty. Well done again. Managing that back line. Even subtle things now, they know that you are aware of them and you're going to be conscious of that and that's all you need is that perception. So along with your talking to tens before the game around doing the job for you around fives and tens and then just that little flick of the head, the odd comment is all you need to do. So it's looking good this second half, that area of your game, so well done. on the offside there as well. Just going back to those two phases back there, I think maybe you could still give yourself a metre, two metres uh, depth initially, but I, I like your width. It looks like you um, can still see everything, got everything under control and the game's flowing in front of you. So that part looks pretty nice. That last one you obviously got caught a bit, so go back and just review that and go, well why did I get caught in that running space where the halfback maybe wanted to pass? And that might have been just that being too flat. So have a look at that and just see what you think. Secondary signal, nice and slow again, well done. Above the head, everyone can clearly see that and you create that perception of calmness, so well done. It's a nice creating width there as well, well done. So that shuffling out, giving yourself that width back there, look nice. See that lovely side-on body orientation? I think you could actually do that at scrum time without affecting your management of the scrum or your calling of the scrums. Take it under consideration.
So this is where I reckon your body orientation could just be slightly 45 degree angled towards the Maris backs and yet you still, your upper body head can still be at the scrum but then it's just easy for you to just have that little eye flick. So there where you're turning your whole body, if you were just more slightly orientated 30-45 degrees so good management, well done. So they were wanting to sneak off again, but you wouldn't let them, so that's really good management. How nicely that just flowed in front of you. You had the width, the ball was sitting under the control, no need to be in close, and you're out nice and wide, so that looks good, looks nice and calm. Re referee under control, so well done with that aspect of your game. Briefly on national TV. Okay. Sweet, nothing's happening.
so once again just back on that other back of phase there I thought your width was really nice and uh, letting the game just flow in front of you again so that part's looking as I said earlier looking good on that you're giving your creating space when you're able to so keep that up I'm really impressed the way that you've brought that backline management in at scrum time into your second half of your game. Good decision. Well done. And good decision to bring that back. Good control. So I think when you've got your arm up like that and you're looking at the players, you can just drop your arm. That's sufficient indication that they can then move. So at line out time two and it takes for me it's whether after you drop your arm it's up to them whether they want to come in or not so I'm more happier when referees just drop their arm and leave the decision up to the back lines to do what they want to do then um, but you can call them in it's up to you.